Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about hardness testing. So the definition is resistance to localized plastic deformation. So there are two keywords here, localized and then plastic deformation. So we are indenting our specimen with a known tip and uh, a tip with a known geometry and material. And then we are measuring the deformation after removing the fourth or plastic deformation. And then we are correlating this deformation to a hardness value that is ranging from 0 to 100. So what is the advantage of hardness testing? Why are we performing hardness testing? First of all, hardness testing is giving us an indication to a scratch resistance. So the harder the material is, the more resistance it shows to scratches. So if you are scratching a diamond uh, with a metal, the metal is gonna scratch, not the diamond, because the diamond is much harder. The other reason that we perform hardness testing is because it's very easy to perform. It takes 10 seconds to uh, perform hardness testing, and it can be done on any geometry. We don't need a dog bone specimen or a slug or any other uh, specific geometry. And also it's non-destructive. And that depends on how you define destructive testing. But after hardness testing, you can use the specimen. You are uh, not uh, ruining the specimen. You're not destroying the specimen. So it's a non-destructive. So that would be very helpful. Again, if you're using in aerospace application, you really can't perform hardness testing and use the specimen. But in other cases, uh, that is considered a non-destructive testing. The other advantage that might be probably the most important one is that it gives you local uh, properties. So when you're performing tensile testing, it gives you one value for elastic modulus. Well, for hardness testing, I can do indentation here, 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 at different locations and get a range of value or distribution of values. So that's one of the main advantages of hardness testing. But here we talked about the range of hardness, 0 to 100. So what is the unit for hardness? Hardness doesn't have a unit, but we use a scale and we report the hardness value based on those scales that we used. And we have a range of different scales. But the important one is Rockwell, Vickers, and Brinell. And the difference between these are the tips that are being used and the load that is being applied on our specimen. The common tips are spherical ball or braille, which is a three-sided uh, tip that is used. And the range of the load that we apply is ranging from 60 kilogram to 150 kilogram, depending on the scale that we use. So for Rockwell, which is perhaps the most common one, we have a scale A, B, C, D, E, F, G, K. And the scales are not listed in from the lowest to the highest. There is no uh, correlation from A to K. The most common ones out of these are A, B, and C. C is used for hard material. And Rockwell can, depending on which scale you use, it can have both spherical and braille. But for Brinell, it only use spherical uh, ball for tips. But let's say compare Rockwell C and Rockwell B. So Rockwell C, the load that we apply is 150 kilogram load with a braille tip. For Rockwell B, 
use 100 kilogram and the tip size is 1 over 16 of an inch ball or spherical tip and rock will see as we mentioned used for harder metals rock will be used for metals but for softer metals so if we have uh, for cold rolled rock will be would be pretty good cold rolled steel would be a very good scale and then it's on probably for hot rolled steel but what's the problem if you use cold rock wall c for let's say hard roller seal because it's so hard the values are going to be very low they're going to be uh, around zero and we can't get it or the other way around what if we use rock wall b for a very hard material then all the values would be in the range of 100 the top is uh, the range and we really can't compare them uh, there are comparison tables but rock wall b if our rock wall c is 20 our rock wall b is reaching its uh, high value of 100 so you can see the the difference between the two scales here i'm showing you part of these comparison tables that compare different type of scales from rockwells you have vickers brinell noop and, and and so forth uh, and then it gives you information on what load you need to use and what tip you need to use for each case and this is just part of the table. There is, there is the, the larger one is uploaded on, on Canvas. Yeah, but one thing that I would like to draw your attention to is this value, this column, tensile strength. So tensile strength and uh, uh, Brinell hardness are correlated. I mean, when it's correlated with Brinell hardness, that means that it's correlated with other hardness as well. But perhaps the relation would be much simpler when we are comparing these two. So our ultimate tension is approximately 55% of our Brinell hardness. I mean, this is not a very accurate uh, correlation, but it gives us some insight and it's very helpful because it takes 10 seconds to do hardness testing. And if you have information about ultimate tension, uh, that would be very helpful information. So I would like to call it a quick and dirty way of relating the material property or finding the material property. Just perform hardness testing and it has all the advantages that we mentioned. Of course, you need to be careful that for hardness testing, if you're performing hardness testing, uh, the, the surface hardness and the core hardness uh, can be different. And so you, you have to be aware of that. And if they are the same, then probably this would be a better uh, correlation. But that's a property that you can get from hardness. So what are we doing in this lab? In this lab, we are performing hardness tests on three materials, aluminum, our hot rolled steel, and our cold rolled steel. The scale that we use for these two, we are going to use hard, uh, Rockwell, hardness Rockwell uh, B, and then here we use Rockwell B. This one, because it's a little bit harder, we use Rockwell C. We can get away probably with Rockwell B, but the problem is that the value reaches so high or in 90s that really we can compare if you use Rockwell B. So we are, what samples are we going to use? We are going to use the tensile specimens that we broke in previous lab, in lab 1 and lab 3. And we are going to write the specimen number here because the specimen number gives us information about the strain rate that used and the temperature that we used. The location that we are gonna perform, we are gonna use it on four different locations. So if you have this tensile specimen here, location one would be close to the fracture area. We're performing multiple tests, but not on the fracture area because that will make our sample to, to move and that would uh, cause error in our calculations on location two we perform a couple of hardness testing here and then the hardness testing when you're performing make sure to that uh, the locations are not too close to each other because they're going to affect uh, the property that we get location three and location four in the tab region so if I want to make a prediction, I would say that the hardness should increase as we are getting closer to the fracture area. The hardness should increase because of the strain rate. Here, the strains at these regions are much higher than 
let's say the the tab region but we'll see what what trend we get and whether we get that kind of uh, trend because we are performing multiple hardness testing at each location we can get a we can perform some statistical analysis and that's the statistical analysis is the same as impact testing that I that I explained uh, because we have some values uh, you could report you could plot the average also we could have some error bars here so these error bars for error bars you could plot the mean and max that's the way it's shown here low and high this would be the lowest value to get you get the highest value that cc error bar is smaller here or you could have a standard deviation plus minus a standard deviation or plus minus confidence interval i mean these two are more common both excel and matlab have the capability to plot uh, error bars and the function i think in matlab is just error bar so because we get a range of value and we want to see whether the hardness is changing, we can't just look at this average and say, that, oh, okay, the hardness is going up or going down. Of course, the, val the average is going to be different. But how different? Is it statistically different or not? And we are going to use the difference between the two means, so, or mu1 minus mu2. Similar approach that we talked in the previous lab. And if that range includes zero, which here it doesn't, then... There is a statistical difference because this value is always be non-zero. Here there is a statistical difference. Here there is no statistical difference because it includes zero. And there would be a scenario that mu1 minus mu2 would be equal to zero. So there is technically no statistical difference. So if there is a range, if the range includes zero, so if the answer is yes here, then no statistical difference. 